it's Tuesday, May 19th. I'm Lucy Steiner. And I'm Sam Cedar. Which of these stories will you be talking about today? Trump abruptly announced that he was taking hydroxychloroquine, the malaria drug that is completely unproven to treat the coronavirus. Whether or not he's actually taking the drug is still up in the air, but this is definitely the president's strongest endorsement of a potential quack cure to date. Meanwhile, new evidence uncovered by House Democrats shows that Donald Trump's firing of State Department Inspector General Steve Linick was even more corrupt than previously thought. Surprise, there's an arms deal with Saudi Arabia involved. And lastly, a Massachusetts drug company reports promising results and its first limited human trial for the coronavirus vaccine. You are listening to Majority FM's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. Donald Trump took a swan dive into the deep end of the pseudoscience pool today, publicly announcing that he is taking hydroxychloroquine, the unproven malaria drug he and other conservatives have said can treat coronavirus. Trump did not say that he had coronavirus, but claimed that he's been taking the drug for about 10 days as a precaution after being exposed to the virus. Listen to this doofus. Quote, all I can tell you is so far I seem to be okay. I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. And if it's not good, I'll tell you right. I'm not going to get hurt by it, unquote. Trump's personal physician, Sean P. Conley, appears to be going along with this, saying in a statement that, quote, after numerous discussions he and I had for and against the use of hydroxychloroquine, we concluded the potential benefit from treatment outweighed the relative risks, unquote. You'll notice that this statement does not actually confirm that Trump is taking the drug. For all we know, he could be making stuff up again. But what's more important is that he's once again promoting an unproven and possibly dangerous drug from the biggest podium in the country. Not great. Meanwhile, the administration is also waging war on the World Health Organization as Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar fired shots at the international organization, blaming its response in China for costing lives. Late Monday night, Trump joined in, threatening to pull funding from the WHO unless it started serving America's interests. We have a president promoting an unreliable drug and a government that utterly failed millions of dead, distraught, and jobless Americans. So are we really one to talk about the WHO's mistakes? Outside of the pandemic, Trump's latest blunder into crony corruption might be even worse than we thought. Yesterday, we told you about Trump's firing of State Department Inspector General Stephen Linick, his latest unceremonious axing of a key watchdog supposed to keep his administration in line. Linick was allegedly investigating Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for a whole host of policy violations, like making staffers walk his dog and pick up his dry cleaning. But on Monday, Senate Democrats reported that they had discovered Linick was investigating something far more serious, Pompeo bulldozing past Congress to push through the Trump administration's controversial arms deal with Saudi Arabia. Pompeo and Trump pushed the arms deal through despite widespread uproar by both Republicans and Democrats over Saudi Arabia's killing of Jamal Khashoggi and their brutal indiscriminate war in Yemen using an emergency declaration to basically override Congress's protest. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Elliot Engel said Monday that aside from dog walking, Linick was investigating that, quote, phony declaration, unquote. The end result of all this is largely the same. Trump will probably skate. But the implication is that if Congress actually manages to nail the administration on the Saudi arms deal, which was one of Trump's rare moves that notable members of both parties disagreed with, it could give them slightly more leverage the next time the president tries to sell millions of dollars of guns to a country that murders journalists on a whim. Hey, Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off of your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. All shipping, of course, is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Developing a vaccine is not a quick process, as everyone currently stuck inside their house or apartment can probably tell you. But the combined efforts of basically every virologist on Earth are getting some results. Moderna, a Massachusetts drug company, announced Monday that the first vaccine to go through human testing appears to be safe and able to stimulate an immune response. In other words, it's not hurting people who get it, and it's fighting the disease. Granted, this is a really small study. Eight patients injected with two doses each of an experimental vaccine. It's going to need much, much larger trials before we know if it's the real deal. 
The gross part, however, when Moderna announced the news, its stock price soared, and turning the hunt for a cure into a capitalist rat race is sure to leave a lot more bodies than if we had a functioning healthcare system that could work on this thing together outside of the bounds of the free market. The government does have a hand in things, though. The New York Times reports that Moderna produced the vaccine in collaboration with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the last sane man left in Trump's corona crew, is leading the clinical trials. So it's nice to know that while Trump is gabbing about ingesting miracle cures, someone behind the scenes is still doing the actual work. And now for some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. A new report by the San Francisco Chronicle shows that the country's immigration courts are utter chaos right now, with hundreds of thousands of cases delayed due to the pandemic and compounded by the federal government's haphazard response. In China, another flare-up of the disease forced the government to slam down harsh lockdown restrictions on over 100 million people in the Jilin province, highlighting just how serious proper containment of the disease is. Meanwhile, several U.S. states are throwing caution to the winds and reopening everything. Rebecca Jones, the data scientist who designed Florida's helpful, easy-to-access COVID-19 dashboard for tracking the disease, has been fired because she refused to censor data on behalf of the government, which is preparing to reopen the state. In a heartfelt note to her colleagues and members of the public, Jones noted that she would, quote, not expect the new team to continue the same level of accessibility and transparency in their new data releases. Attorneys for Ahmad Arbery confirmed on Monday that the video which depicts Arbery's murder at the hands of two white men is more than four minutes long, meaning that Arbery was pursued for much longer than originally reported. If that's not premeditated murder, I don't know what is. Quicker, quickie. That's it, folks. Thanks for listening to the Majority.fm's AM Quickie. Sam? Thank you, Lucy. Tune in to the Majority Report live today at noon, folks, or later wherever your podcasts are found.